What's going on you guys back here today and we're in my office and I am super excited because over the last week I have been getting a load of stuff in that I ordered for video equipment. Now there's a whole lot of stuff that I can point to and say I don't need like my camera that I currently have and my Sigma lens and blah blah blah. I should be making videos with what I've got. I don't need better equipment to make better videos but I want to make better videos. So I started off with having some issues in the Power Mac G5 video with focus. So on this A7R2, there is no flip out screen. So when I set up a shot, I put the tripod down. I'm a one man band, so to speak. I hit record and I walk in front of the camera and then I go back over and I hit play and I look at it on the little screen and I hope that oh, I can see it in focus. And if it is, then I try to walk back to the exact same spot, which doesn't always work. Well, that changed a couple days ago when in the mail came my newer NW-A7S field monitor showed up. It's a seven inch 1920 by 1200 LCD panel. And it's not the greatest, but it at least shows me if I'm in focus. It has focus peaking. It's got an HDMI in for the camera and an HDMI out if you wanna go to an external recorder. It's got a headphone jack for monitoring audio. And yeah, it's just an all around great little deal. Um, you can charge it off or you power it off a cord or run it off of a Sony NP550 or equivalent battery. So I'm actually running the NP550 battery. It seems to be doing just fine for me. But on to the next thing. When I ordered that, I thought about how unwieldy this camera would be. And ultimately when I got this camera, I was like, you know what? It'll be nice to have a good camera. I can take it places and go do things. But at the end of the day, like even if this camera was smaller, I'm still not gonna take it anywhere because it's an expensive camera. I mean, the A7R2 body is a couple grand, the lens is a couple hundred bucks, the adapter is a couple hundred bucks. So like at the end of the day, it's 3000 bucks to take it out and just go beat it up. And that's not what I wanna do with this camera. This is meant to be used in here for, for what I bought it for. So I decided I'm gonna pick up a second camera to take with me and go out and do things, but it's also gonna be able to be a B camera for in here. So recently, the last year, six months or so, Canon came out with the EOS M50. It's a mirrorless Canon. It shoots 4K at 24p, uh, 24 FPS, sorry. And uh, yeah, it's just a nice lightweight little camera. It's under $700 with a kit lens, and it is just a great deal uh, in my opinion. So I picked one of these up and the best part about it is it uses this EOS-M lens, which is a different lens than the EF uh, mount, um, but it uses the same pins as the EF mount lenses do. So what that means is you can buy a cheap adapter. This is less than $100 for this Viltrox EF-M to EF lens. You can throw this on here and then grab your lens throw it on there and boom, you have a Canon 4K camera compatible with the autofocus on the camera. And even though you have it, you got this flip out touch screen. So the best part about it is that you have this screen that I'm not even gonna use. So here's just a quick little demo clip. This is the Sigma 18 to 35 uh, art lens and it's got Canon's running its autofocus right now, and I'm just gonna slap the record button here and get a taste for what we're looking at. So here we're looking at my uh, A7R Mark II through the uh, Canon EOS M50. So, and here's my new field monitor, check that out, that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's a pretty big camera, and uh, the next thing that I wanna talk about is the lens that's on this camera. So that camera right there is running the Rokinon 16 millimeter T 2.2 lens. It's a manual lens, so there is no autofocus, no auto aperture, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty good lens. A lot of people recommend it. It's got high reviews on Amazon, and it's a 16 millimeter, so it's got a super short focal length. So I can be in my office and be able to uh, use this lens no problem. And then I also picked up this Rokinon 35 millimeter T1.5 lens because I wanted to give myself just a little extra, um, little extra bit in case I want to do some kind of close-up uh, shooting of any kind of subject. But 
Uh, when I throw it on for a shot like this, like it's way too big. It's way, way, way too big. It throws me all the way back in between my desk and the TV stand, which I want some kind of background in my shots. So I couldn't use it for this, but I will be able to use it on builds and on reviews and things like that. So that's gonna be pretty cool little addition to have. So all of those things should address my focus issues. And the next thing I got was more of a luxury item. So I wanted to get a better tripod head for this camera because when I do some panning and stuff like that, sometimes my tripod head, it was old. I bought it at this camera shop for used gear behind my office for work. And uh, they had it and it was like 150 bucks and I used it for a while and I just wanted a nice smooth head. So I got the Manfrotto 502 uh, tripod head and so far so good. I haven't really used it, it's just been kind of sitting there ever since I got it, but hopefully I get to make use of it. So going on from there, I picked up this Joby Gorillapod, and a lot of you are asking, you don't do vlogs, you don't plan on doing vlogs, why do you need this Joby Gorillapod? And actually, I bought this because there were a couple times when I was working on that Power Mac G5 where I needed to get real close, and my giant tripod would not let me get closer to the, to the subject. So, um, I went ahead and picked this up. It was pretty cheap. And yeah, so hopefully if I get into a spot where I need to get up close to something, I'll either have that 35 millimeter lens or I can just use this little tripod here and get up in focus and show you guys what I'm working on. That's all fine and dandy, but one of the other major issues that I had with that Power Mac G5 mod video was lighting. And I actually picked up a two pack of newer LED light panels. They have the warm and cool light color adjust. So two different colors of LED on the, uh, on the panel itself. And basically I've just got them bouncing off the walls right now. You can see my hand messing with the lights and this side over here. So um, basically I just throw that on the, on the sides of the videos and they're a great LED light. They use the same battery as the field monitor. And yeah, they're pretty sweet. They also come with a cord to charge them, but they don't come with stands. So on that, I picked up the newer tripod stands on Amazon for like $27. And they're great. They hold the lights like they're supposed to, and they go up to above six feet tall, which is way higher than I'll ever need them. And last but not least, uh, I picked up for myself as a little, little item for workflow improvement is I picked up a USB card reader because basically I was just using the USB-C adapter for my MacBook card reader plugged into the back of my motherboard. I thankfully had a USB Type-C plug on there, but um, I had to unplug it and reach around the back of my computer just to find the memory card slot. It was kind of a pain in the ass. I didn't really ever use it. I just plugged the camera into micro uh, USB, which that was great, but it's five times slower. You were getting 18, 19 megabytes per second uh, read speeds on copying footage over, whereas with the uh, USB adapter with the memory card, you could throw that in there and get like 100 megabytes per second. So uh, I picked that up. It's a USB 3.0 uh, hub. It's got three USB ports on it. It's got the SDXC slot, the micro SD slot and two memory stick slots, which I don't know what per, or what uh, form factor they're for. And then it's also got a phone stand. So that way when I have it sitting on my desk, it doesn't look out of place. Well guys, that pretty much wraps it up for me. I know that a lot of this seems unnecessary and over the top and expensive, but you know what? I really do enjoy making videos and I want them to be good and I want to have nice things. So I chose to, to get all this stuff. now. You can say all you want about just make content with the gear you have, blah, 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 but I want to make content that I want to watch. And honestly, the last Power Mac G5 video that I posted was not a video that I would have wanted to watch even when I was searching for how to modify these Power Mac G5s. So that's why I got all this stuff. I hope you guys can understand. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below like this video, subscribe to my channel, watch me grow. And uh, yeah, if you wanna see my last video, click over here, that's gonna be about a thermostat. And if you wanna see uh, my first video of the how to mod your Power Mac G5 video, click over here. And if you wanna subscribe, click right here. That's all I got everybody, hope you have a wonderful day.